Hello. In this video, we're going to look at how to read from text files using Java. We're going to use a PowerPoint presentation and look at some examples and highlight some ideas. But in another video, we'll actually get in there and program an example. So reading from a text file. To read from a text file, we'll be using the following classes, the scanner class and the file class. To read from a text file, you need to know how to handle an exception. This presentation will explore one possible way to read from a file. There's much more to explore here. Really, I'm just starting the, starting the conversation, so to speak. One of the reasons why I introduced this in my class is that many computer science contests require reading for data from a file. So if you're going to take the senior level Waterloo contest, you have to be able to read your data from a file. So, like I said, we have to know how to handle an exception. So the first thing we're going to talk about is throwing an exception. When something goes wrong in a program, an exception will be created, and Java must handle it somehow. So basically, if things go wrong, Java is going to say something's wrong, and then throw back some information. Um, a program must be prepared to handle an error if it occurs. So if something goes wrong, the program has to be ready to handle it, even if we know the code is perfect. So if you say my code is 100% right, it doesn't matter. If there's a possibility that something might go wrong, you need to instruct the computer what to do. One option is to have a method throw an exception. So what happens is, for example, something's happening, an exception or error occurs, and the method might just throw it away. You can think of it like me discarding that error and letting someone else deal with it. What this ultimately means is that there's going to be a default message, default error message printed out when your program stops running. So the first thing we need to know is how do we tell a method to throw an exception? We need to add a line to our method header. So here's our main method header that we should be comfortable using. All we do is we add to the end of it the word throws, and then we specify the exception at the end. So it's important to know that exceptions can be thrown by any method. So any method that, that is, is used might throw an exception. If a method can throw an exception, meaning that something specific could be go wrong and an exception is thrown out, the code must be designed to account for the possibility. We said that in the last slide. To find the type of exception that is thrown, if any, we look at the API. So here are the two classes that were two constructors that we're going to be using to read from files. We're going to use the scanner and the file. And if you notice, right here it tells me what exception might be thrown. So I now know that this, when I construct a scanner object, passing a file as the parameter, I might get a file not found exception thrown. When I construct a file, I might get a null pointer exception thrown. You don't have to explicitly deal with null pointer exceptions. They get dealt with automatically, so we're not too concerned about that. We're really only interested in this exception right here. It's important to note another option is to tr use a try-catch statement, but they're a little more challenging, and we're going to explore that in the next, next PowerPoint presentation. So let's talk about how we read from a text file. It's very similar to reading from a keyboard. So instead of passing the scanner, cast, scanner constructor system.in, a file object that points to a specific text file is passed. So that's the line we need to read from the keyboard. What happens is we first need to construct a file object. We've now constructed a file object. And the name of the text file is passed to the constructor as a string. So we've constructed a file object, and it's looking for the file in.txt. The next question is, where do we make that file? By default, Eclipse is going to look inside the root of the project. So on your hard drive, you have a project folder, and your text file needs to go inside that project folder. You can actually make this point to anywhere on the computer by writing the full path. But remember, if you put a backslash, you have to put two backslashes because backslash is an escape code. And we'll look at that in the actual programming example. So then we just create our scanner object and we pass our scanner object the file that we've created. So that scanner now looks at that file on the computer. So there's the code we write. And we it should work, but it doesn't. I'll tell you the syntax is right. I'll tell you I've imported all the correct things. So what's the problem? The problem is that the scanner constructor might throw an exception. And the program doesn't know what to do about it. So to solve that problem, we tell the method, or the main method in this case, to throw the exception. 
and there it is. So we add throws file not found exception. And so now the computer knows that if something goes wrong, just take that exception and throw it out. Since it's the main method throwing it out, there's then some default behavior that will handle it. What you'll notice a lot of times is that there's, well, you'll notice there's lots of different types of exceptions. If you're ever not sure, it's a safe bet just to put throws exception. Exception is the most general exception there is. Um, and then, of course, there's more detailed and specific types of exceptions. But if you're not sure, or you're a little trying to figure things out, um, a good thing to put here is throws exception if you, if you need to figure, work through a problem, especially if you have multiple exceptions being thrown. Now it runs, but when I run it, I get this. So this is what happens. This is that exception in action. What's happening is I'm running the file, running the program, I haven't actually created in.txt, and then it's saying file not found exception. So this is what the, what the default behavior is. It prints out that error to the screen for us. So now we need to create the text file. And there's lots of ways to do this. You can do this by going through the actual, the actual explorer on your, on your computer using Windows Explorer, or you can do this directly in Eclipse. One way to do this is to right click on your project, make new untitled text file, and then a text file will appear in Eclipse called untitled, some number, however many you've made. We're gonna populate the file with some text, type some stuff in there, we're gonna hit save all. Then we're gonna select the project and name the file. So I wanna put this in the project introduction to files, I wanna name the file in.txt, and I hit okay. The text file will appear in the project right there. If it doesn't, or if you ever make a file on your hard drive and it's not there, remember you can refresh your project by clicking on the project and pressing F5. So now the question is, how do I read from the actual file? You read from the file just like you would read from the keyboard, using s.next, s.nextline, s.nextint. But as opposed to reading from the keyboard, since the scanner points at a file, Next is going to go to the file and pull the next non-space string, stopping at the space or end of line. Um, so again, what happens is, imagine when you're typing in Microsoft Word and you have your flashing cursor. The file has a, a, a flashing cursor, so to speak, that kind of keeps track of where it is. And every time you pull something from the file, that cursor moves along. And so I'm going to say here that you need to play with these ideas to really appreciate them. They're tricky, and you have to know what the file looks like before you dive into it. Um, so it takes some planning. So if you're gonna use a file in your, in your game or in whatever program you're writing, make sure you str strategically set up what, the informa what information is in that file and what it looks like. Of course, there's ways to deal with you know, files you're not sure about, but that gets a little more complicated. So here's an example piece of code. We notice we throw our file not found exception. And then the first thing we do is we say string word equals s.next. So in the past, that would pause the program and the user would type something in. Now what it does is it goes out to the file, and I'm going to tell you the file contains this information, and it's going to grab the word one and store it into word. Then it's going to print word to screen, so our, to print the screen, we're going to get the word one printed out. I can do that in one line by saying system.printline s.next. So it's going to read the next string in there, which is 2, and it's going to print out 2. This line is going to read the next string in there, which is 3, and print out 3. So now what happens is, at this point, your cursor is sitting essentially right here in the file. And the question is, well, I want to go to the next line. So I can actually just read the, remaining of the remains of the line, and that will move me down to this line. So that just moves us to the next line. And then if I do s.next line, I'll read 456. And so we end up with that. I really want to stress the point that this is just scratching the surface about how to get yourself started with this stuff. To appreciate these commands and get a feel for them, you really need to practice and play around with them. And like I said, please see video examples for some more detailed cases. I hope that helped.